So, well, thank you everybody for joining us this morning. My name is Mark Woodward. I'm president of the Missouri Common Ground Alliance, and I'm joined uh, with I'm joined by Nick Rasa of Missouri 811, and we are doing the first ever kickoff to a safe 2024. And this is brought to you by Missouri 811 and Missouri Common Ground Alliance. Through our partnership, we have a lot of partners on the call today. We really appreciate everything that everybody's done over, over golly, the past decade with the Missouri CGA Summit, Missouri Common Ground Alliance, and we are trying to grow. So this is the first ever kickoffs to a safe 2024 webinar with anybody that wants to come and join Missouri Common Ground Alliance activities. And so we're in a new year, and the point behind this webinar is to just review some basics that everybody can do within their own organization, within their own company, to make sure we stay injury-free, incident-free through the year. Bill Doan, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. So we are going to do this thing in about 45 minutes and i've got some activities that we're going to announce with regard to missouri cga through 2024 and even some discussions about 2025 and and our website is mocommonground.org and we also operate a thing called the international locate rodeo and nick is instrumental in this uh, Arch is instrumental in this, but so the Missouri Common Ground Alliance primarily does the annual damage prevention summit. Dwayne Hartman's an, an instructor. There's a lot of folks on the call today that help out with that. We do the summit, but also our volunteers because uh, we like to bite off more than we can chew and just chew it. We also operate the International Utility Locate Rodeo. So our two websites are mocommonground.org and locaterodeo.net. And we've got some updates on locaterodeo.net, and we're going to continuously improve those websites throughout the year. So keep keep an eye on those, okay? And today, you can reach out. You know, know that you can reach out if you have any questions on damage prevention or safety. You can reach out to Nick or I. Pretty easy. Just take a, take a screenshot of this or take a photo of these numbers and reach out to Nick or I if you have any questions. I get questions on safety things daily from lots of folks, and I get underground, you know, utility damage prevention questions. I refer those over to Nick and the folks at Missouri 811. So reach out to us anytime. Also, if you're over in Kansas, Arch York has joined us today. Arch and Keeley are over at Kansas 811, and you can reach out to us to get a hold of Arch. Whatever we need to do to stay in touch, but just realize that we are a resource for you in safety. So I'm going to kind of keep going. Uh, we have at the summit and Missouri Common Ground Alliance, we have we have basically two main goals with the summit and with CGA activities. I want everybody here to know that we're all volunteer. And the CGA is just kind of this nebulous thing. There's a lot of folks involved with the CGA. The Missouri Common Ground Alliance is a, is a chapter of, of, a, of a larger group called the Common Ground Alliance. And we are geared to, uh, to increase education throughout the state to help people excavate safely and avoid contacting an, an, a buried utility. That's, that's what it is. Our mission is very similar to Missouri 811. Uh, also, we can broaden that message by encouraging all job site safety. So if you're in construction, if you're excavating, if you're working on a job site, we also broaden the message out from not just underground utility, buried utility safety, but to all job site safety and anything construction safety related. So that's what we try to accomplish at the summit. We're going to expand that message. We're going to expand in 2025. We're going to expand a few things in 2024 as well. So that is the purpose. We're all volunteer. We have a lot of our summit sponsors, donors, and exhibitors on our call today. And we greatly appreciate you because I want you to know that all everything that you do to support the summit makes sure 
that the summit is offered completely 100% free of charge. We don't charge any of the participants a single dime. So your support is key and critical to just making things safer on a job site for our construction crews. And that's what we're going to keep doing. And that's the summit. And everybody on this call today, you're all considered a part of Missouri Common Ground Alliance. We're an alliance, we're a team, and that team's directive is to do two things, make all job sites safer and to make our excavation safer through safer digging practices, right? So that's what we're going to do. That's what we try to do. And I also want you to know that we're kind of like Sisyphus because our job is never done. We're always going to keep working. You guys know the story behind Sisyphus, so we're going to keep pushing. Sisyphus, we're on a webinar today, and Sisyphus right now is pushing that rock. So, um, but, but just keep in mind that our job's never done. The safety plan's never done. The safety program's never done. And, and all job sites have hazards, and we have to address them, right? So um, our numbers are kind of going in the wrong way. Um, I think we had 104 or 108 employee fatalities in Missouri last year, we went up a little to 113. So we have work to do. Basically, every two days, we lose an employee in the state of Missouri. Um, so an employee is killed somehow in the state of Missouri. We have way too many lost time claims. We have way too many in injuries across the state of Missouri. I work for a workers' compensation carrier called Missouri Employers Mutual, and we, just our company in Missouri, we're one piece of the pie. Just our company handles around 10,000 employee injuries per year, okay? So we've got work to do, and that's kind of the mission. We're going to keep pushing. We're a part of the safety. Um, I mean, we just want to make things safer across the state and actually have an impact on these. We definitely want to have a positive impact on construction worker safety and reduce the risk. Travis Taylor, good to see you, buddy. Appreciate you jumping on today, man. Yes, yeah, so I'm late. No problem. Not a problem at all. So one of the things I want everybody to do, and this is a basic, kind of a really crazy, overly sim simplistic thing. But I want you to review your safety rules. Now, Nick is going to hop on here in a second. Nick is going to present what he would like everybody to do and focus on in 2024. But what, what we're both going to ask you to do is, number one, what are your safety rules? And do your employees know them? Okay. And are they having an effect? Are they having a positive impact? I want you to look at your injury statistics, your injury rates, what has happened, and is anything changing? If you've had five injuries per year over the last 10 years, then you, you have work to do. If you've had a consistent 25 injuries, if you've had things happen, what do we do, need to do to draw those things down? If you need any help with that kind of stuff, reach out to me. I can provide some assistance to you. But what are your safety rules? Also, one of the things I would encourage you to do is take the excavator manual that Missouri 811 provides, the excavator manual that Arch and, and the folks at Kansas 811 provide, and turn that and reverse engineer it into a safe digging policy for your company. So take the information out of those guides and turn them into a policy. Now you have the rules. Second thing I need you to do is think about safety meetings and educating your employees about those rules. So the biggest impact we can make in safety is do people know what the rules are? Have we provided that training? And then a key critical thing, and Nick will discuss this too, is the job safety or job hazard analysis, task safety analysis, whatever you want to call it, but it's the pre-work safety risk assessment, okay? That is critical. One of the big things we encourage all excavators to do before they do any, any movement of any dirt on a job site is do a pre-excavation job site inspection. So what are the rules? Do the employees know them? Followed by monitoring. Management needs to go out and make sure our people are wearing their seatbelts, wearing their PPE, digging with care. 
right? And then followed by corrective action. It doesn't make any difference if we're not correcting the issues. So how are we going to get to zero incidents? How are we going to get to draw those things down closer to zero? How are we going to make an impact? Is do the employees know the rules? Have we provided those safety meetings and reviewed the rules? Um, do we go out and monitor what employees are actually doing on a job site? And then followed by what corrective action happens? What happens when employees aren't wearing PPE in your organization? So um, I do know a lot of safety people. I know a lot of, uh, you know, I know a lot of folks. I work with a lot of municipalities, all types of in, in, in industries. And a lot of employees will tell you, I've never read the safety rules. I've never seen them. I don't know what they say. We're just kind of winging it. Also, I go to a lot of safety meetings where we will talk about a particular topic, uh, job site fall arrest, trenching, safe driving. And in that safety meeting, the safety rules are never provided. We just have a safety meeting. But the rules aren't discussed. So a big thing is get the rules out there. Get a copy of the excavator manual from Nick, which is also provided in Spanish. And when you talk through safe digging, go directly to that excavator manual and use that and treat it like policy. So Nick, what do you what would you what do you want? I mean, what, what big recommendations do you have for everybody moving into 2024? What's your vision for helping job sites get even safer in 2024? All right. Can you hear me, Mark? Yeah, buddy, I can. All right. Well, a big vision of the National Common Ground Alliance, as you mentioned earlier, is to reduce damages by 50% in five years. That's a noble goal they've taken on, uh, imposed on every state in the United States. And in Missouri, uh, I just figured up the other day how many damages we had in the state of Missouri last year, and it was about 14,000 damages. So their goal would be to reduce that uh, by half in five years. We need to get down to less than 7,000 damages in a year. And so you'd ask me to kind of highlight some things that excavators could do to reduce some of them. And so some of the big things I see uh, with excavators when they're out in the field Number one, by now we need to know to submit a ticket. But even today, we still see where excavators, they'll think, well, I've been there before. Uh, I've been to this mm -hmm. site. I know what's there. And it's just not true anymore. There's so much stuff getting installed every day. Uh, fibers get installed by directional drills, gas lines. I mean, you don't even know they've been there. And that's still one of the big things we fight is to get every excavator in the state to call in it or submit a ticket online. Uh, the next thing is that we see a lot is making sure the competent person in the field has a copy of that excavation ticket. And why would the person in the field need that other than the person in the office? Well, the person in the field needs to know what utilities are listed on that ticket. If there's six utilities out there, that competent person on the job site needs another six utilities. Mm -hmm. They also need to check the statuses on each of those tickets, see what the uh, utility has conveyed to them. Did they have facilities in the area? Were they marked or were they clear? And they can check the status online, right? They can check the status online. Uh, they also get a, each excavator also gets a copy of the statuses emailed to them as they come in. So mm -hmm. there's multiple ways those are conveyed to the excavator. And again, if that only the person in the office has that ticket, they're only getting that information, yeah. not the people in the field that really need it. Uh, Mark brought up earlier that one of the number one things uh, that needs to be done on a job site, and I call it a visual scan. Uh, everybody in the job site needs to do a visual scan of that job site uh, before they start excavation. They need to look around. I mean, let's face it, locators can make mistakes. And if a gas company has clear on the ticket and you do a nice visual scan and walk around that job site and you catch a gas meter that hasn't been marked, then you can call back to us and do an incorrect locate and we'll get that utility right back out there. So that's another thing that that's the importance of having that ticket in the field is knowing what utilities are out there. That way, when you do your visual scan, uh, you can see if anything's been missed. And it also, uh, there's other hazards out there that doing a visual scan can help you prevent, you know. For instance, private utilities. Yeah, yeah. private utilities. 
uh, stuff like that, it's not gonna get marked by the utility companies. So that's always a good idea to do that visual scan. Uh, and also when you're digging up, digging around utilities in the tolerance zone, the best way to prevent a utility damage is put eyes on that utility. I mean, that's the number one, I hear it all the time. Well, I assume that utility was deeper. I, I hear assume all the time and it's like, let's face it, most utilities aren't that deep. That's a very, very common misconception. Utilities are really deep. So we need to make sure we're putting eyes on those facilities and that we're really being careful in that tolerance zone not to damage damage anything. So and it just seems are, like when a damage happens, it's that one little extra step that could have prevented it. So what what would be the the what do you see as the best method for doing that, Nick? Would that be hydro excavation, vacuum excavation? I mean, yes, hydro excavation is by far the safest method to dig around a facility. And I realize that's not in everybody's budget in the state of Missouri, but if you can uh, hydro excavate, that is definitely the safest form of uh, putting your eyes on that facility. Uh, and just to put a plug out, uh, we are having uh, Missouri 811 boot camps going on around the state right now, all of January, February, and March. Uh, get on our website, get on the calendar. We've got four great damage prevention managers that can, like Mark mentioned earlier, everything that's in that excavator manual, all the Missouri law, uh, those uh, guys and girls do a great job of teaching you everything you need to know about Missouri 811 and the processes and best practices you need to take. So that's going on right now. Any utilities that are on here, we've got locator training going on once a month around the state. Uh, any small municipalities that need that help learning how to locate and properly locate facilities. Uh, we've got that going on. So, and that's about all I have, Mark. Yeah, I appreciate you, Nick. And Sarah, thank you very much for putting that link out there as well to the boot camps. So appreciate it. Nick, you know, we're, we're, you know, I guess this, this session today is just about encouraging everyone to do the basics really, really well. Now, everything that Nick mentioned, take these points and put them into a policy and say, this is what we're going to do, right? Um, on the MoCommonGround.org website is a sample of a form that we created a few years ago called the Pre-Excavation Damage Prevention Checklist. And they're out there on the resources uh, the multimedia page of the mocommonground.org website. Now, that is an example. That is a sample that may help you create a document of your own that is a pre-excavation, you know, that is a pre-excavation um, inspection, which we really like. So, moving ahead, I'm going to Click to the next slide here. If I can, I've done something to my thing here. I've started a funky annotate thing. I'm going to shut that off. All right, here we go. We're back in action now. So a big focus at the summit is obviously trench safety. We see these things, unfortunately, still out in the field pretty regularly. We've talked about this for years. I think Nick and the Missouri 811 team, we've talked about this for well over 10 years, trench safety. This is a big thing we've got to make sure that nobody does, which is dig down below safe levels. Anything below, anything deeper than four or five feet in the ground needs to be sloped, shored, or use a trench box. And that's just the way that is. So in your organization, this should be zero tolerance. There should be a lot of zero tolerance policies, but this is definitely one of them. Digging without a locate, zero tolerance, right? Um, not checking the status of the utilities that are trying to respond, that's zero tolerance. Digging too deep without shoring or sloping, that's a zero tolerance, right? We've talked about this for years. You guys know, all know trench safety. If you see something like this going on in your community, one of the things we encourage our municipalities to do is stop and talk to these folks. If it's a plumber, if it's a homeowner, I believe over in Lenex, uh, Leewood, Kansas, a homeowner was buried doing their own sewer work. So stop in, 
talk to them. If you need to call me, I'm always around. I take these calls all the time. Call me and I will help out with it, but there are options versus just driving away. One of the things we have to do is take action on unsafe acts and conditions. Take action within your own company, but if you can lend a hand, that's what we want to do. The Common Ground Alliance is about lending a hand and growing the safety message as well, right? And one of the things as well with the things that Nick mentioned and with the safety rules that we discussed is we need to give more emphasis to the rules that make a big difference. So, for example, uh, we have we had a Missouri Common Ground Alliance board meeting and summit recap meeting planned for tomorrow. It was in person. It was supposed to be here in Columbia. And we had to cancel because of snow and ice potentially coming in. We just, we don't want people driving <laughs> to do a safety thing <laughs> in the middle of a blizzard. So, so we canceled that. One of the things I want you to know is as the risk goes up, you need to give these things more emphasis. So if I'm an excavator or a municipality or a utility that does, that does excavation, if call before you dig and if, if uh, you t the utility locate process, if we're having a little bit of trouble with that, then we need to spend more time, more emphasis, more attention on that topic. So with safety activities, I frequently see things like uh, slip trip fall is handled in one safety meeting through the year. And then we assume that that did it. Or we have a safe driving safety meeting and we may sign seatbelt policies, but we just do that once a year. But if I look back at your incidents, injury incidents, underground damage, uh, you know, underground utility damages, if I go back through and look at your incidents, then I compare it with what was done with the safety plan. You'll see that we may have only talked about it once, once or twice in a year. So you got to realize that as your risk for an incident in your industry goes up, you've got to spend more time on it. If I know that motor vehicle crash is a big problem for everybody, then I probably want to spend more time on it. If I'm having issues with contacting a buried utility, then I'm going to go in and look at the safety training, safety meetings, safety policy, and say, what are you actually doing about it? So think about those things. As the risk goes up, we may need to talk about it way more than what we're doing now. Um, we sometimes make the mistake of saying that, well, if I talk about it once in a year, then that makes me compliant with OSHA. And that's not true at all, because if you still have an incidence, you can't have two things. You can't have like, some weird safety uh, OSHA compliant manual, but also over here still have incidents. That's not the way it works. It doesn't work with DOT either. So I want you to think about that. The most common ways people get hurt on the job are slip, trip, fall, strain, sprain, motor vehicle, and struck by. How people get killed on the job is going to be motor vehicle crash, falls, workplace violence, and then the OSHA focus for topics, which would be electrocution, struck by, caught in between. So we're going to talk about top injuries, top ways people get killed on the job, and then special hazards unique to your organization. Well, a special hazard unique to your organization is going to be excavating safely around buried utilities. And my people do it all the time. That's what we do. We're an excavator. So I'm going to make sure that my crew knows the excavator manual backwards and forwards. So a one and done approach doesn't work in safety. I can't talk about it once a year and expect everybody to get it. It's constantly, 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 constantly talking about the big ticket items and keeping people's awareness high, right? So the JHA and the TSA, I'm not going to spend much more time on that, but that is a big deal. The pre-work inspection of job sites is critical. We talk about it in safety, but it's not done very well. The big thing you can do for 2024 for your job sites is take the pre-excavation inspection form that's on mocommonground.org and do what Nick said. Step four of what Nick was saying, which is a job site walkthrough before you excavate. 
and make that policy. Okay, similar to your ex pre excavation inspection form, the competent person excavation form that Brian Smith with the builders talks about at the summit, that document needs to be policy. Right? All right, let's keep moving. Like what Sarah mentioned in the chat function, we have toolbox talks. So we have written over the years toolbox talks. There's 36 of them on mocommonground.org. So if you would like to use a safety toolbox talk, feel free. It's completely free. Download the PDF, keep it, use it. We actually share those with other uh, with other industry associations. We have videos and we have the pre-excavation damage prevention checklist, competent person checklist, and I believe there's a competent person uh, confined space checklist there as well. So check out mocommonground.org. Check out our YouTube page. We've got a lot of YouTube videos up there. Check them out. They're out there. The whole, all of the docudrama stuff, all that stuff's out there on, on YouTube. Um, some upcoming dates that you guys are going to want to know about, okay? This is big, so mark your counters. Get your, get your camera out and get ready to take some photos of these. So the summit's back. Summit's back, and we're doing the summit December 11 and 12 of 24, okay? So get that on your calendar. We don't really know if we're going to do the, I, the International Locate Rodeo on Tuesday of that week or Thursday. It's up in the air. But we will do the summit and ILR on December, December 11th and 12th. Now, spread the word because we can grow. We can grow into the Wilson Logistics Building. Now, Dwayne, I'm not going to put the OSHA 10 back in a broom closet again this year. It's not going to happen. We'll actually put you guys in a room with air conditioning. <laughs> it's going to happen. This year. Yeah, heating so, would be great since it's December. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so, okay, so Wilson Logistics Building is actually done, and we can expand. We're thinking about closing down Classroom 2 in the East Hall. And expanding things out into the Wilson Logistics. So we're, we're talking about it. We're talking about growing. 1,400 in attendance was around the sweet spot of where we wanted to be because classrooms just frankly got too big. You can't put 400 people in some of those classrooms. So it's going to allow us to expand. And uh, we had 1,438 in attendance. It's really amazing. And I want everybody to know, and I want our exhibitors and vendors to know that we trained 1,438 people at a cost of basically 97 bucks a head. So it's, it's, it's very cost effective. It's very impactful. And we thank you, our exhibitors and sponsors and donors, for making this happen. It would not happen without you. So it's very, very important. And we want to thank everybody. So mark your calendars, December 11 and 12. And we had 80 supporters at the summit. We had more than 80 supporters. We had, we had, we had supporters. We had so many people bringing things and supporting folks like Dwayne and Lockton Companies and our instructors. We had 65 instructors donate their time. It's really an amazing operation. And just reach out to these folks and give them your business, okay? Stay in touch with them throughout the year, okay? Uh, special thank you to Missouri 811. Missouri 811 is the largest contributor to the summit, and we cannot do it without Missouri 811's contribution. And also, we have a shared mission to, like Nick said, reduce damages 50% in five years and make construction job sites safer. That's the mission, okay? We are planning, so keep an eye on your email, we are planning additional trench safety, job site safety seminars. So February 21, we're going to be at the St. Louis Zoo in the Anheuser-Busch Auditorium with a trench safety seminar. So keep an eye on your email. As you know, I'll email you. Clay with NG Hydrovac will stick it all up on the, uh, on the Missouri CGA Facebook page. March 12th, Midwest Public Risk in Independence and March 14th, Lenexa, Kansas. So we are, uh, we're trying to grow. We're trying to add different activities. That's, that's what we're planning right now. Also, just keep this in mind on the strategic plan or in our strategic plan we kind of have an informal strategic plan but it is the strategic plan would be to grow summits and one thing we would like to do is re 
create the Nebraska and Kansas summits in St. Louis and Kansas City. Now, if you've been to the Nebraska summit, in Arch, your summit in Kansas is April 10th, right? So in Wichita, Kansas, Arch and the Kansas 811 folks and the Kansas, Kansas Damage Prevention Council are putting together a summit, and it's one day in one auditorium, and they're amazing events, and we're going to try and do that in Kansas City to partner with Kansas 811. And in St. Louis to also partner with the folks in Illinois. So that's down the road. If we can pull it off in 25, that'd be great. But that is the plan. So and then we would continue to do this, this, the super summit in Springfield. So it's coming. We are trying to grow. Upcoming events, Nebraska Summit. If you can get a chance, get up there to Nebraska. Jill and Travis Barron and them put on an amazing event. That is February 21. Uh, you've got the Midwest Builders Association, uh, the Midwest Construction Safety Conference provided by the Builders Association. That's coming up March 7 and 8. Um, Josh Youngblood with MPUA, you guys have some activities coming up as well, right? Josh, are you still on? I'm still on, what, yeah. All right, buddy. What you what do you guys have going on at MPUA coming up? So coming up in, on March 12th and 13th, we have our water and wastewater tech summit. Uh, it's an opportunity for uh, water and wastewater operators to get together and work on networking uh, and then look at, listen to some and learn from presentations from industry experts. Uh, we've got people much like Mark Woodward going to be speaking there. We've got HDR, Locke Mueller, um, Burns and McDonald, uh, Kim Heck out of St. Louis talking about all different aspects of water and wastewater uh, treatment and everything that goes into it, uh, making sure that we have professional uh, operators throughout the state. Um, we don't have the exact number of credits gonna be available, but we do offer um, continuing educa education credits for both professional <clears throat> engineers and water and wastewater certification credit hours. Um, so that's a great thing. Another thing that we're working on uh, that we're working with 811 and Mark on is um, we've got a workforce development grant through the Department of Economic um, Economic Development where we are looking at training utility operators. Um, so uh, if they're from a disadvantaged community or uh, there's an economic advancement ability for them to to gain from it, we're able to take people run them through this three week course. And then at the end of it, they'll have a good overview and understanding of what utility operators are, especially in water, wastewater and electrical uh, utilities. Um, and and that's, that would be free of charge for for those that qualify. Um, right on, right on. That's very good. Yeah, we're. I'm looking forward to it, Josh. We're gonna have a good time. So at that. So, it always is. Yeah, man. Well, I appreciate you jumping in and uh, chat about that. Thank you very much, Josh. So MPUA is an important partner to damage prevention, and we appreciate you hopping on today, Josh. So, um, and here's the Nebraska, or I'm sorry, the Kansas summit. So put that on your calendar and get over to Wichita on April the 10th. So we'll all be there. Um, Arch, we're really looking forward to it. Yeah, Woody, I appreciate it. Definitely uh, throwing that up there. I did put in chat the KSDPC.com is the website and page that we have set up for our safety summit. The, um, attendees can sign up there as well as sponsors and exhibitors as an opportunity to sign up. Uh, some email blasts will be going out. So those of you on the call, you guys, a lot of you on this call will be on our email blast coming out from Keely and I this week in regards to our safety summit. We definitely want to thank Missouri CGA for um help put us out uh, this is our first one the, the nebraska folks uh jill and um jill graber up there and uh, travis barron's helping out a lot as well but uh just so you guys know that we're all all in this together yep. and the, the missouri cga actually has even got to the point where they have they're offering up not only themselves to come out and help us get off this ground but some of the stuff that they have to make this work some of the uh some of the operating things that we need. I mean, even all the way down to check in tables and uh, how to do it and things to hang your lanterns on and your giveaway boxes and stuff like that that, that mm -hmm. are added expenses that you just don't know until you try to build it. 
but um you know missouri was nice enough to say hey you know use ours until we can get you off the ground so that's great yeah. um so definitely check that out uh we're looking for as many attendees as possible we're getting really good traction right now we wanted to continue to grow and woody i like your idea of uh, having those many many summits different places we talked about that actually internally at kansas 811 about refocusing our look in 2025 for excavator awareness and it could be a matter of doing many summits versus the old school get together in a room all the time just to talk about the same thing so we're looking always looking at new things yeah i, th I think it's i think it's feasible i think it could be done without a kajillion dollars i think it could be done just just like what you guys are playing in kansas and nebraska i really do i think it could be done um mm -hmm. Uh, we've just got to we just got to spread the word. Got to make these job sites safer. Just is what it is. So we're gonna yeah. we're gonna hammer on it, Arch. That's for yeah. Sure. And hey, Woody, real quick, wise, I got soapbox just for two seconds. Uh, yeah. You mentioned earlier in your presentation about the continuing education as far as safety every day. Safety, you know, you don't do it just at the beginning of the year. Yeah. We see that a lot in Kansas. We see a lot of uh, let's do our safety training early while we're slow. And we got 10 guys sitting in the room. We do that. And by midsummer, they got 20, 25 crew members working. And those other people that got hired on didn't get the benefit of that early meeting in the year. Yeah. So definitely utilize Nick uh, raised on a call with Missouri 811. He and I and Missouri 811 and Kansas 81 have partnered a lot. And we still continue to partner. We pool some of our resources, some of our money, some of the things we can do to get training available for people. So check out our websites, both Missouri 811 and Kansas 811. Um, we have partnered on some of the LMS, some of the learning tools that are out there. Those tools are free to use. Um, you know, I hate to always say the word requirement, but you know what? Sometimes it's safe. You got to say the word requirement. I like to see a requirement of somebody new, a new hire with your company require that they go in and take some of these courses. All the courses have the ability to print out a certificate of completion or me email that to your boss. Yeah. You and a big company, actually, Nick and I can build you into our system to where you can watch all your employees take the courses and know who is completed, where they're at on the course um, and things like that and watch their test scores. Like I said, hate to say requirement, but you know, sometimes it is required. So if you have if you're hiring in new contractors, have them go to Missouri 811 and Kansas 811 sites, have them take the course, make it a requirement. Why yeah. not? Yeah, keep that message in front of everybody. Yeah. Thanks, Woody. Hey, you're Appreciate welcome. It. You know, Arch also, you know, when you look at some of our injury data at Missouri Employers Mutual, it's around thirty to forty percent of all work comp claims that come into MEM are new employees. So you're spot on with that, with that continuous education mindset in a company that when you bring on a new person, you don't sure don't want them to miss a safety message and have to wait eight months or whatever to hear a safety me. And that's a bad idea. I'm telling you, our loss data shows it. And new hires are definitely a target audience, that's for sure. So Really quickly, we're moving on. I've got a couple more things I want to wrap up. We do have the National Common Ground Alliance Conference, which is it's coming up in April as well, and that's in Colorado Springs. So a lot of us will be out there at that event, but that is where you get to hear national emphasis issues, national issues, national safety improvement issues. So that conference is coming up in Colorado Springs, so a lot of us will be out there. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Clay Laster with NG Hydrovac. He is, he and Sarah work together to, to run our Facebook page. He has also started a LinkedIn page, which we are going to start populating with info. So keep an eye on our social media. And if you have any questions about any of that info or whatever, get a hold of us if you want to see more things posted. Also, keep in mind, we talk about the St. Louis or Kansas City Summit. This is just, we're in the fact-finding phase right now but we will send out a survey to everybody that was on this email list to get your opinion as to when and what you would like to see in those events also folks that came to the 2023 summit you're also going to get a survey as to what you thought about the event and then same with our uh, exhibitors so surveys will be coming out you'll see those come out by email and when you do take some time to go through them it'll be something like a simple five question type of thing just let us know what you think about time and that kind of thing 
So keep an eye on social media, keep an eye on your email. As you know, I'm going to send you a ton of stuff. And uh, we actually have a partnership now. Missouri CGA has a partnership with OSHA. OSHA uh, uh, has helped us out since day one at our Missouri summits. They help out. They will be helping out at our different uh, trench safety days. So we uh, really appreciate OSHA's partnership because I think it's very important that, you know how it is, you do a safety meeting and you say, well, you know, OSHA wants this or OSHA wants that, and you're not really sure. And not that many people read subpart P of the excavation standard. So something to think about is we like, we really appreciate that OSHA joins us because we get to hear straight from them what do they want on job sites versus hearsay. So it's very important that OSHA stay involved with what we're doing, and we, Missouri CGA, has an official partnership with them now. So I want to work on wrapping this meeting up. I think this is it. Arch, this is a miracle. Um, I've, we're done early. <laughs> Usually when Woodward gets involved, this is... <laughs> we'll be here till 10 30 right next <laughs> so does is anybody on on this webinar have any questions is, are there any announcements that i've missed um we will be having quarterly board meetings for missouri cga will we will be starting monthly summit planning meetings and the International Locate Rodeo Planning Crew has already put out quarterly planning meetings. If anybody here would like to participate in those, let me know. I'll put you on the email list for the planning meetings. You don't have to come to every single thing, but if you want to poke, poke your nose in and see what we're talking about, what we're doing, feel free. Everybody's invited. Reach out to me. Email me. I'll put you on the list. Quarterly board meetings. Um, we are going to do our fourth quarter 2023 meeting in January because we, I mean, after the summer, we were all just whipped. We didn't get it done in December. So we will be doing that in January in the summit rundown meeting as well. So we got a lot of things going on. Keep an eye on your email. Reach out to me if you have any questions. Sarah, does anybody have anything that we missed? Is there anything that we missed? Okay. Hey, Mark. Yeah. This is Elizabeth. Good hey, morning, Elizabeth. everybody. Good morning. <laughs> I want to say thank you to Mark and the gang there for having a tremendous um, conference or summit last year. Uh, we really enjoyed every minute of it. It was it was really a killer. It was amazing. We enjoyed every minute of it. So I don't want to say thank you to Mark and all the people that um, are working really hard to. Uh, keep this moving forward and uh, we are looking to help each other and uh, one of the things is we need to keep the statistics down and we yep. are in that mark right now so let's keep it you know we don't want more deaths we don't need more deaths we don't need any accidents right. so and your organization is really making the difference not only in region seven also nationwide. So thank you. I just have to say that. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate you, Elizabeth. Really do. We could not do it without you guys. We couldn't do it without the support of our vendors and sponsors. And we're going to keep pushing the limits, Elizabeth. We're going to keep pushing. Uh, we're not going to give up. We're going to keep hammering. We're always going to bring a top notch, top notch, top quality event to folks. And all ideas are on the table. But we want to bring, we want to, we want to make an impact. We want to make a difference, and we couldn't do it without all the folks that contribute, like you, and all of our instructors and our vendors and sponsors. It wouldn't happen. And Missouri eight one one, it's, it's, it, it's critical that we keep doing this, and we're going to. Okay, we, we will. So, take care, everybody. We're going to wrap up. Thank you. Have a safe twenty twenty four. If you need anything, reach out. We appreciate everything you do. We appreciate your work on these job sites. And we'll see you soon. Take care, everybody. Thank you very much. For the time, Mark. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you guys.